not done best practice in my opinion because you know we should have really saved this first so I'm going to save this as on my desktop in preparation for moving it to Dropbox now the book says call it bracket I'm just going to call mine P dash bracket so how are we feeling at this point that we've done what we have been expected to do to create a front view and a right side view we've created our features which in this case large arc contour two circles which represent holes radiuses which represent fillets and the overall height width and depth of the part so we've we've done what we set out to do in identifying the characteristics of this part now we're ready to actually get down to the technical stuff of giving it life with dimensions and notes. Okay. So I'm up to page 6-26. Hold on to your hats, kids, because this is going to get fun. All right. Because we're going to access yet another style manager. Now I'm going to go into my dot cam here for a second. And the author in the book, the user interface has gone through several renovations when it, since it was first released in what year? 1982. The purpose of these renovations was to make commands more accessible. I can't even, I can barely remember now how it used to be to set a dimension and it was really a very complicated process because you had to set a dimension extension line first then you set a dimension line then you set the numerical value and then you had to set arrowheads okay so it was like a multi-step process so in our case we have the menu bar we've got the ribbon and the ribbon, anytime we're going to be working in this technical information, I'm just introducing to you a new word and a new place. They haven't necessarily used this word in AutoCAD terms before, but it's called annotate. Okay? Annotate. So the dimensions toolbar in the annotate tab. And then notice we also have the ability to do it in the command prompt. So, you know, like anything, we got multiple ways multiple methods that we can access and accomplish the task at hand. But wait, there's more. Okay? Because there's also the dimension toolbar. And so what we're going to do before we go in and build a style is we're actually going to go to our tools, toolbars, AutoCAD, dimension, Toolbar. Now, the very next thing you need to do, because it isn't located on top of your screen, look over to your other screen, find it, and drag it back to AutoCAD. And there it is. Okay? So that's yet another way we can accomplish our task. Let me do that again. My apologies. There I am asking you to do something you couldn't see me do. Tools, Toolbars, AutoCAD, Dimension. Follow me, Roger? Okay. Tools, Toolbars, AutoCAD, Dimension. Grab it from your other screen, drag it, and you can dock it below your ribbons. It, it is, in fact, a quick toolbar, yes. You have everything at your disposal either by going to the dimension tab, or excuse me, the dimension menu tab, all of which are right here. I can also go to my annotate toolbar, and all of my, all of my dimension tools are located in the annotate toolbar. But before we do any harm to this beautiful harmless object and knowing that it's theirs, we actually have to create a dimension style that's going to be appropriate to the work at hand. 
So at the bottom of page 6-27, we're going to go in and create a dimension style. And we're going to do that how? Next page. So you take note of the first sentence, which reiterates what we learned all the way in chapter one, which is the rule for creating CAD designs and drawings is that they should be created full size using real world units. And goes on to say the importance of this practice is evidence when we begin to, to apply dimensions to the geometry. So in our case now, we're actually going to use some of this stuff that we've created and we learned about line types for and apply a style to it. So as it is in a lot of things in AutoCAD, it can be kind of confusing, but we're going to select and place, and that can be confusing. So we're going to do two things, and that's to recall our rules, and the recollection of our rules include the function of the part, and then some basic understanding of the manufacturing operation. So let me give you an example of understanding the manufacturing operation. If I know something is a hole, do I want to give a radius for that hole or do I want to give a diameter? I'm thinking manufacturing now. Yeah, why? Why would I want a diameter? And a di drill bit is always defined as a diameter. Very good, okay? Excellent, took my drafting two students a week to get that, okay? It, it would be hard to drill a hole with half a drill bit, basically. You know, that's kind of the hard part. So we're going to do things as diameters for holes. So that's what they're saying about what's the manufacturing process that we're defining and dimensioning to, and how is this part used? What's the function of the part? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new dimension style. Now we can do that a variety of ways. And I'm going to show you how we're going to get in in a variety of ways. So if I go to dimension in the menu tab, almost at the very bottom of our dimension, all our dimension choices is something called dimension style. Let's click that and it opens up a dialog box. Let's escape out of that. Let's navigate to the annotate ribbon tab. And now I'm going to go to my dimensions choices or to my ribbon or to my length of dimensions. And notice I really don't have the ability to find the standard. Oh wait, there's more. And that's this little teeny arrow off to the corner. Okay. Nope. No meeting. So it'll be next week, so you're good. Bye bye. Same time, three o'clock. Uh, I might make it earlier. If you can help me with a computer. Yeah. Are you hold. Hold me hostage. Hold it hostage. Oh, yeah. I, I know. <laughs> okay, so that little teeny arrow, dimension, dimension style. You might have noticed if you're a Microsoft Word user, that same thing exists, right? Sometimes the most powerful tool is in the little teeniest icon. So there it is, okay? That little arrow pointed off to about the four o'clock position. So I'm going to click that arrow. And it takes me right back to the same location. Is there any other place I can find dimension style? There is. Right on the dimension toolbar. Click back to the same spot. So is there another way to do it? Yes, there is. And that's to go to the command line, DIM, 
And if you take a look under D, oh, what's the first one that comes up? Dimension style. Okay. Yeah, Joe. Right side? Mm -hmm. What, what? What am I missing? So this one right here, good catch, outstanding, thank you Joe, that, oh you and Jasmine, well right on Jasmine, let me give you half the credit for that one, good job, and um, I can easily go back to my home tab, change to my hidden line quickly, choose a line. I can find that intersection, come on over quickly, and there's my intersection. Good job, guys. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to change my dimension style. Am I okay to do that? Okie doke. That's perfect. And there's, there's a few things to do here. There's one that's very, very, very important, okay? Write this one down in your imaginary notebook that you're not bothering to take notes in. We do not, under any circumstances, at any time in drafting 12, use annotative dimensions. Don't even think about it. I know you want to. And I know one of you is going to ask me right now, but gee, John, why can't we use that? What is annotative dimension? Because we really want to use it. Annotative dimensions are for old people like me. What that means is I select a text height that I want, say quarter of an inch. All of my numbers are going to be a quarter of an inch. I am going to print this particular object at a scale that makes the object appear very, very small on my page. My text will still be a quarter of an inch tall. Likewise, I may print it so that it's very, very large on the page. My text is still a quarter inch tall. It was designed by a bunch of old fellers like me, old machinists, who constantly have to look through trifocals like me, okay? And they were having trouble with these young whippersnappers coming in with this CAD stuff, trying to get the height of the text right. Well, I had to reduce it in size, boss, so I went ahead and just made the text smaller. Great, I can't read it. So annotative text came around. If we do not properly know how to use annotative text, bad things can happen, like your text for your dimensions can disappear. We will not use it in drafting 12. Furthermore, there is one thing that can get you fired in the drafting world and it is write this one down in your notebook you're not bothering to take notes in. Changing the standard. You don't change the standard. So you notice that we have annotative and we have standard. We're not going to use annotative, and we doggone well better not modify our standard. So when you're in a dimension style, the most important button to start with is N-E-W on the right-hand side, second one down. And we're going to create a new one. And that new one, notice that AutoCAD was kind enough to actually highlight the standard 
When we create a new one, it says creates a new dimension style in which you can define a new dimension style. Let's click it. And it says the new style name is going to be copy of standard. Not really. It's going to be mechanical. That's what we're going to write in there. And it then further goes on to say, do you want to start with standard? And then there's that check box right below it that's annotated. Checking that box is like crossing the streams. <laughs> Checking that box is like cutting the blue wire. Boom. <laughs> you feel me? You don't know you want to do it. You're gone. <laughs> I know. Hurt locker over here. That's right. I am the hurt locker. So we're going to start with the standard. Now you do have a choice to make that annotative. Don't do that. You want to. I know you do. You don't. Don't do it. Standard. No check in the box. We're going to call our new style name mechanical. Hello, mechanical. And we're going to continue. And just so you know, we haven't really created it yet. So it doesn't show up in the style mode until we finish our work here and we've accomplished all our tasks and click OK. But it says new dimension style colon mechanical. So let me see if I understand your question, Joe. Is there ever a time when you would change the standard and it's OK? No, no. Yeah, we're doing it, but we're doing it by duplicating it first, yeah. right? And that way the standard is always untouched. Uh -huh. And we make a new one to suit our needs, OK? So it isn't so much the personal women desire of what we want. It's that we want a style uh, to fit to a certain customer. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And I might have two or three or five different mechanical styles at the end of the day. Yeah, sure. But in this case, but this mechanical style is going to be based on the parameters that I set, OK? All right. Notice that there are multiple tabs at the very top of this choice. There are a lot of choices to be made here, a lot of things for us to make sure are set correctly. I am now at the top of page 6-29. And the very first thing that it wants us to choose is selecting the primary units tab. Now, you guys remember my story about the drafter that, you know, he used the four-place decimal because that's, where our, that's what AutoCAD standard was, and he never changed it? Oh, you guys haven't heard that story? Let me tell you that story. Oh, the guy who got fired? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Each one of those zeros to the right of the decimal place is money. Okay. So if I'm working in a machine shop environment, in this particular case, a machine shop environment that's capable of doing 10 thousandths of an inch, which, by the way, if you pluck a human hair, how thick is that? 3,000, yeah. right? So we're talking about the possibility that you are looking at less than a hundredth of the width of a human hair. And if I told you that I am going to give you an unlimited amount of time, but you have to make sure that your dimension is good to one ten thousandth of an inch, or I am going to make you walk the plank, how long would you take to do it? <laughs> as long as it took. We make things to print. Machinists make things to print. If you tell them to make that whole location to within one ten thousandths of an inch, they will. Even if the only tool they have available to them is a blowtorch. And they might run through a lot of material to do it. They might run through an awful lot of time to do it. But they're going to give you what you want. Each one of those zeros to the right of the decimal place is very expensive. Goes up in cost, in material and time, sometimes as much as a factor of 10. So part of the author's statement about knowing the manufacturing practice, okay, 
but you're a drafter. I'm not a machinist. I don't know. What's the best thing you could do if you just started a job in a manufacturing company? <laughs> Talk to the, your customer of your stuff, okay? Ask somebody. Or go out on the production floor and look for yourself, okay? That re would require you to ask somebody. How, how do you do this? Oh, you cut it with a torch. I probably am not going to use ten thousandths of an inch for you then. Huh, no, I don't think so. Plus or minus a quarter of an inch, I'm good. Right? That's pretty big. But I can cut plus or minus a quarter of an inch with a blowtorch pretty quick. Okay? Know your customer, know your process. Yes, and don't ever answer the boss with, I left it at ten thousandths of an inch because that's AutoCAD's default. Don't do that. That'll get you fired. So I'm going to click it to two places past the decimal point to the right. That accomplishes number four and number five on page 6-29. Number six says to click on the Fit tab. This is where AutoCAD can give us some intelligence. Now, I'm going to be honest, we're going to go over a couple minutes, but I really like to set our style before we finish up today. It won't take more than a couple more minutes. So we can let AutoCAD help us make the decision of how to enter the text or the dimension based on a certain set of parameters, meaning if there isn't enough room to place both text and arrows inside the extension lines, the first thing to move outside the extension lines is either the arrows or the text for best fit, the arrows only and never the text, the text only and never the arrows, both the text and the arrows, always keep text between the extension lines, or the last one is suppress the arrows if they don't fit inside the extension lines. These are various choices that exist based on the differing types of conditions we might encounter with the types of parts that we're going to be detailing. Notice in the lower right hand corner, the author has given us a scale for dimension features. And it says, uh oh, there's that word again. Don't check that box. Don't hit the radio button that says scale. Leave everything to an overall scale of one. So what's important for us to kind of take note of right now is we didn't change anything on the fit tab, but we're aware that those changes can exist. Number seven says to go to the text tab. And the text tab asks us to change the text height from a default condition of 0.180 to 0.125. And we move now to the lines tab. And in the lines tab, we change the extension lines, extension beyond dimension lines from 0 0.180, we change it to 0.125. We don't change anything else, okay? Everything else remains the same. And then the last <coughs> tab that we use is symbols and arrows. And in symbols and arrows, set the arrow size and center marks to 0 0.125. So 0.125. We're going to change the center mark. Instead of it being center mark, we're going to move that to the third choice and make it center line. Now what's wrong? with my particular choice here. What's happening with my extension lines and my lines? 
showing up as dashed, right? Okay. Is that a problem? Well, kind of. They're supposed to be solid, right? Okay. The control for our dimension style depends on our layer. And remember, I left off correcting a mistake that I created because I didn't add that dashed line, that hidden line, below the bottom of the part, right? Jasmine, you and Joe figured that out, and you needed to correct me. I will make that problem go away when I properly apply my dimension line layer, okay? So at the moment, I'm not worried about that, but I want to be aware of it, and we'll confirm it in just a moment. Yep, because that's the style, yeah, and we're on that layer, okay? Correct. So we also need to change our center marks from 0 0.09 to 0 0.125. Now, number 11, we've changed our center mark to a center line, we've changed our arrow size to 0.125, and we've changed our center mark location to 0.125. It looks like we can go ahead and click OK. We, we, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of show you uh, when we get together next time, I'll, we'll dimension this part and I'll show you what, what behavior we actually created, okay? Uh, but in our case now, we're going to select mechanical. We've gone away from our style definitions and now we're in our manager. And we're going to set mechanical as current. Once we've set it as current, we can click close. And you notice now that in the window of our dimension toolbar, the word mechanical shows up. In our annotate tab, our mechanical style shows up. Okay. Now I'm going to change away from my hidden lines and I'm going to make sure that I'm on dimensions. And I've selected that. Now, because I'm unsure of what I created with those dash lines before, I'm going to go back into my style manager, and I'm going to modify my mechanical style to confirm. You notice now it's no longer dashed. Okay, So the behavior takes on the characteristic of the layer that I'm on. So you notice now I have dashed, <coughs> excuse me, I have solid lines, but I have a center mark that now reflects the center of the hole and the proper cross hair characteristic. Click OK. Good practice would be to confirm that I've set mechanical to current and close. That's where we're going to stop today. <coughs>